Basically, this idea of the middle is from the start is the moment you first birth your desire, right? Of, of wanting something, of wanting to manifest something. And then there's the end result of you having that thing. And then there's that middle section right here, this middle section. And we tend to kind of screw things up for ourselves when we start messing with this middle section, right? The idea behind this is when you birth your desire for your manifestation, you should claim it as it is yours now that this manifestation, that what you want, whatever it is, it's mine now. And you have that inner state come over you and, and that embodiment of your desire come over you and start living from that idea that the manifestation that I want, it is mine right now. And as long as you affirm that with conviction that it is yours now, you don't have to do anything else. You don't have to do anything else. The manifestation will find a way to come into your experience with no effort at all, without you needing having to lift a finger, it will come into your experience. Now, of course, we tend to screw this up sometimes, right? If we say like, hey, I want to manifest, you know, $100,000 or something like that, we go, okay, I want to manifest $100,000. I have $100,000 right now. I affirm it. This is me now. Okay, now let me figure out a way how I can build a business or do all this stuff so I can make $100,000, right? We start trying to take action. And in that middle of trying to take action, there's a lot of angst and there's a lot of stress and there's a lot of resistance. And all of a sudden we find ourselves out of this state of, I am, you know, someone who has a hundred thousand dollars into somebody that says, I don't have a hundred thousand dollars and they need to find a bunch of ways to try to make it happen. If you were somebody that had a hundred thousand dollars, would you need to find any way to make a hundred thousand dollars? No, you already have it, right? So when you live in that state of already having what you want, you don't need to worry about how to create it. You don't have to mess in the middle because you already have it. And if you affirm that with conviction, it must happen. That will become fact if you persist in that assumption. Same thing if you want to manifest like a specific person. Affirm, I'm in the relationship now. Go in that inner state and tell yourself, I'm in the relationship now. It feels so good to be with that person. I see them smiling at me every time I smile back at them. They love me. They're obsessed with me, right? Put yourself in that inner state and then allow the transformation to take place on the outside. Remember, we have to fill it in here first. We, we create it from inside first, and then it reflects to the outside. What it doesn't mean, you know, again, going to back to this messing in the middle part, is say I'm in the relationship now, this person loves me now, we're so happy together now, feel it, and then say, I gotta go text this person, right? I gotta go call this person. I gotta go try to, you know, get this person to pay attention to me or do something towards them. No, we're messing with the middle again. This idea is, just to find peace, find peace and find happiness, living in that state of being that you have your manifestation now. Find that fulfillment, find that happiness inside. And there's nothing else that needs to be done. Nothing else that needs to be done. It's not our job to figure out how the manifestation comes. It's not our job to figure out what we need to do next. It's our job just to believe that it's already done. And then everything else will fall into place. Everything else fall into place. Neville tells a story about a guy, and this is probably back in the 40s and the 50s, so quite a while ago, but he gave uh, speeches in different parts of the world. He gave speeches. I'm not really sure what, if they said, but anyway, basically when he'd give his speeches in the audience, there'd be like five people, maybe 10 people that he'd give his speeches to. Not very many people come to see this guy speak, but he wanted more people to come to his talks, right? He wanted to get more popular and have more people come. So instead of saying like, man, I got to, you know, promote myself, man, I got to do this, man, I got to get my, I, I got to change the way I say things. I got to attract more people. What he said was he's going to live in the end state of what he wants. And so even though there was only five to 10 people that came to his speeches, he would pretend like the whole auditorium he was in was full, was packed. And Neville even said, um, even though the, there was maybe five people and they're all sitting in the front row, he would say, hey, can you hear me back there? And shout to people in the back that weren't really there. Right? But in his imagination state, in that state of being, that state of consciousness where he proclaimed, people love my talks, people come there all the time, all my talks are sold out. It was so real to him. And he said he didn't have to do anything else. Slowly but surely, people started coming and coming and coming. And now Neville says, at, at that point at least, the auditoriums can't even fit the amount of people that want to come to his talks. So he lived in that state. He didn't do anything else. He just lived there in that state, felt it as if it was real, as if it was happening now and claimed it as is now. And then it happened. Nothing else was needed to be done. We cannot mess with this middle part. I think that's the key. And I have to remind myself all the time of this. This is the big one for me. Whenever I affirm something that this is me now, reaffirm it with conviction to manifest it. 
my mind always tries to go out and say, okay, so you got to do this now. Okay, you got to start planning for this now. You got to, no, bring it right back in. If I really had that manifestation, if it was really mine, if I lived in that state and that was actually, you know, true in this reality, would I have to go and try to do all these different things? No, I wouldn't need to do that because I already have it. So if we live in that state again with that full conviction that it is ours, ours now, that it's our, that regardless of what we see out here, regardless of appearances, that is our manifestation. We can feel it. It's here now. It's inside us now. We have it now. And no matter what, continue to affirm it and not worry about how we're going to get it. Just know that it is ours now. The world, it's a mirror. And whatever we feel in here, whatever we believe in here, will be the reflection out here. If we believe we're in the relationship in here, it will reflect out here without us needing to do anything at all. If we believe we have $100,000 in here, it will reflect out here without us needing to do anything at all. That's the power you have as a creator.